Hello, I'm about to show you a video from last summer where I reflected on a tarot card reading I did with a friend. Now, I've only done tarot a few times, but each time seemed to be pretty accurate to what I was going through and gave me answers that helped me in the moment. This last year especially, so stay tuned as I share the video reflecting on that and see for yourself if you think this is a good tool to ask the universe for answers and see how it impacted me in a, what was a pretty big and transformational year. And I'm excited to see what you all think and let me know in the comments um, what insights you've gotten from tarot or other tools and enjoy. All right, hello beautiful humans. My name is Brayden Miguel. I sometimes go by Ray. And how are y'all doing? Um, we're here to do some design work and check in. I wanna do more with video and amplifying, amplifying my voice that way. Um, what I found so far, it is very much like a skill that takes practice and effort and reflection. Um, and uh, there's a helicopter flying by and there's many elements to storytelling and creating videos um, and expressing yourself that um, keep it interesting and have me learning along the way as I do this work. Um, and as a skill, I want to cultivate to have uh, a bigger reach and bigger impact with my time and effort. So that's just a little bit about me and what I'm up to tonight is first gonna do something more, I guess, Braden related, cause for every idea I want to do with like my company and having a positive impact that way, there's this other more like soulful and emotional side to me of what I have going on and how I help take care of myself and um, the things going on in my life. And I want it to be work and play and self exploration and what am I feeling and what's grounding me? Um, do I want to be grounded at any one given point? Um, how am I working on staying connected? And those are all things to expect more on my Brayden Miguel channel. Um, and separating it out a little bit and putting time into both. So the one that sounds more fun and um, I haven't thought about in a while is I got a tarot card reading recently. Now, I've never gotten one before. Um, I've pulled cards from a deck before. So like the smaller exercise where you like cut the deck and then you pull a card and then you look at the meaning of the card to see if it relates and the times I've done that, I felt connected to that with what I was asking of the experience. And so I had a few experiences like that, but generally, um, try to keep an open mind, but there is a level of like cynicism in how I, my journey started and tend to, to sometimes look at things. Um, but we're, um, I don't know, I think it's cool. I think there's some wisdom. I found it in it for myself and sometimes being able to ask the universe in some way that sends you back a message um, or being able to correlate certain things to traits, I think is cool. Um, and generally doesn't, yeah, like harm. And there's, so the, 
that the you would like discount it um but as a playful thing we're gonna look at it because this is from like a month ago now i've been wanting to make this video for a while looking at this tarot card reading so this is both like this feels good because i've been wanting to make this for a while we need to go like that And then we need to make it bigger. And then we can crop it. Crop it like it's hot. Crop it like it's hot. Okay. And we go enter. And then we make it, we enhance. Ooh. We enhance. Welcome to your first whiteboard. I've been around a whiteboard before, thank you very much. So we're gonna go through this together. Um, these were pulled on 421.23. Um, after a night of helping a friend and by chance being in circumstance where um, was able to be there and then through hanging out to help get back um, the next day. Um, ended up um, pulling cards. And um, it was the first time I got a full reading. And the part of it is um, what you wanna call in and or do a reading about. So rather than it just being generic or general um, getting more direction on a particular part of your life and so I wondered and considered what that should be and I eventually found myself to picking romance as a topic um, in about January February I did um, like a vision board um, and one of the only, like the areas on the vision board where I have like the biggest fog on between me and getting it then is a romance and someone I'm um, spending more time and having more like intimate connections in life. So that is the background and then shuffle the cards, wait until um, it felt right and cut the deck in a way. And these were the cards pulled. Um, so we can look at some of these together and the, the meanings associated with each card. So where am I right now? And I pulled the tower, which still feels very fitting. Would say, uh, when I pulled this, it felt, it felt super fitting because the tower symbolizes, um, like a foundation cracking and things falling like apart and changing in like chaos and then the people in the tower are jumping to what's next they're not necessarily sure what they're jumping to they're just like they're already in the act of falling um to tr work to save themselves and so um So we'll go here and we'll pull up a tower card tarot. Um, so upright, sudden change, upheaval, chaos, revelation, awakening. So it's this time where you're going through something and you're gonna be something different at the end of it. And I'm going through career transitions, I'm going through like life and like new developments of living and relationships and putting myself out there um, that this just felt very fitting. Um, lightning striking a building and two people leaping from the windows head first and arms outstretch. Um, 
So that's card one. Um, the second card we pulled, Past Influence, Seven of Swords. For the question of past influence, we have, it was upright. No, it was reversed. So, imposter syndrome, self-deceit, keeping secrets. Um, this, phew, imposter syndrome, something I've been dealing with, and the... I think it ties to burnout too, but those two things time together, me not being super self-confident and sometimes having internal struggles of how to put myself out there. And I was running for office last year. Like I was processing a lot at the same time while also have only had a handful of experiences presenting differently than normal and so in a way that could be considered keeping secrets I mean I made the decision with myself out of like security and I don't know I guess I still struggle with a lot of like security aspects and confidence um, also pulling this as the past potentially showcasing this changing and when I was doing this reading I wanted it to be in nature with like calling in and like being true to myself and I felt secure enough and comfortable with my friend that I was wearing like a wig and comfortable clothes and um, it was my pink wig calling in um, love and, and change in this area so and that was the whole time when I was pulling the cards um, the number three challenge which is the magician I should have stayed on the website magician um, and this one is upwards as well or uh, reversed which stands for manipulation, poor planning, and untapped talents as my challenge. Um, I feel this struggle sometimes with like struggling focus and like comfortableness putting myself out there. The untapped talents that sometimes I have poor planning. Um, but the context is less my career in life. Let's let's return it back, I guess, to romance of where I'm pulling these cards from. So, un like me, <laughs> my friend joked that I was bad at flirting, and that was my challenge. Was I didn't know how to engage and bridge from friend or acquaintance to romantic partner. Um, there could be truth to that and poor planning I don't put a lot of time around it um, I prioritize like activism and um, and career and other things and like how do I do it in a way that's non-manipulative I don't know how that part ties in um Um, some of the sites have more information. Oh, uh, upright, reversed. Um, shows you are exploring what you wish to manifest, but you are not taking action yet. You are uncertain if you have everything you need and maybe unsure about how to make it happen. Um, if you take care of what you intend to manifest, the universe will, uh, la la la. The universe will work out how, how. Stay attuned to your intuition and pay attention to opportunities as they arise. Uh, these are like little breadcrumbs that will take you closer to your goal. If you're already acting on your goal, it could be a sign that you're struggling to see progress or success. Um, perhaps you have no idea but don't know what action to take to manifest it. 
Perhaps you're not clear on your desired outcome, your efforts are misdirected or unfocused. Um, I remember connecting with this part more so back then than right now. I wasn't quite sure. And I think since then, I've stepped more in the direction of knowing what I want, which, um, do I share this on my video? I guess I can always edit this out later. Uh, I mean, the reason I'm hesitating is because um, it's atypical, but I'm comfortable with atypical, learning to be comfortable with my authentic self in that way. Um, I no longer want to have this challenge as much and I want to step and let known my interests and that what I'm after is a deep connection with someone, with someone's because I think my heart has enough space in it for multiple people. Um, and I'm not like necessarily manifesting like that being meaning I just want to like sleep around. That means like more dedicated relationships um, because e with each one, as you put in the communication and you and you build, um, I believe there's more like power and energy there. Um, I also think though I was like brought up very modest and you can even tell like my hesitance to talk about this, I think comes from like that modesty that, um, that we, that it's, it's good to experience more intimate connections and bonds um and for different connections that looks different and that's something that i want to be more comfortable looking for is like who are some awesome people i want to get closer with and build out cool things with and spend time with Etc. Okay, we're halfway through. Anything else I want to say about this? Um, I have like overall reflections looking at all these cards, but one of the things I, I am pulling from this is that I do need to be more intentional if I want this in my life. And um it's a challenge it's it's dedicating time and attention to that as well as other aspects of um getting my foundation back together okay uh the next card opportunity is judgment um my friend described to this as uh, to me as level up it's like all they said was they're like oh you just gotta level up um i like y'all's website it's really well put together uh, okay upright judgment rebirth inner calling absolution um blows the trumpet blowing the trumpet Yada yada. The people respond to his call, ready to be judged. Um, let's just go to here. Uh, it's calling you to rise up and embrace a higher level of consciousness for the service of your highest good. You're experiencing a spiritual awakening and realizing that you're destined for so much more. This is your cosmic up leveling. You hear the call and you're ready to act. Tune into a higher frequency. Let go of your old self and step into the newest, newest version of who you really are. So the judgment card often indicates that you need to make a life-changing decision, but unlike those associated with the logical justice card, um, requires a blend of intuition and intellect. 
Um, you may be at a crossroads where that any choice you make will bring a significant change with long lasting effects. Um, tune into your higher self, trust your judgment and know you're on the right path. If you still need clarity on the situation, look to your past and life lessons to guide you. Um, it pops up in tarot reading when you're close to reaching a significant stage in your journey. You've reviewed and evaluated your past experiences and have learned from them. All the pieces of the puzzles of your life are finally coming together to form one unified picture of your life story. Uh, this integration has healed deep wounds and you are now able to put the past behind you. You have found your absolution, having cleared... They're just going overboard right now, but it means like... Step into your power. Um, this like... Um, release old things holding you back and level up uh, the purging process will leave you refreshed and ready to take on any new challenges that sounds great um, I need more refreshment in my life uh, the judgment cards suggest that you might find comfort in sharing your struggles with others within a group environment there will be others who have experienced something similar and who can show you the way to freedom from your troubles. Let them guide and help you rise together. I love that part. Um, okay. If you stuck around to this point, I think you understand that um, I'm going through two things, but the opportunity is I evolve and I, what is it? What do butterflies do? Um, metamorphosize uh hmm. okay so that one was judgment um we next ideal outcome four of pentacles so just like to give more context um pulled these and then had chance to like sit with them and process it was a really busy like time in my life um i was helping host things i was helping like cover and go to things and when i got around to like processing and looking at some of these things more um i did make some like reflections and insights um four of pentacles this is reversed no upright um, okay. Possessiveness, insecurity, hoarding, stinginess, stability, security, ideal outcome, savings, materialism, wealth, frugality, boundaries, guardedness. Um, tarot love reading. Um, relationships can be cleaning and even suffocating with the four of pentacles, tarot love meaning. Uh, relationships with this card can be filled with jealousy and possessiveness which can slowly deteriorate even the happiest of loves. Uh, these are likely issues of insecurity or fear involved. Um, and lovers may have to take some time to untangle these issues before they drive away their partner. If you're single, this is likely you're still holding on to something from your past romances, whether it's grudges, resentment, or the dream of an ex returning to your life. These things need to be resolved before you can truly be open to another lover again. Um, this card is interesting because if we look at the that meaning, but some of these other meanings as well, um, uh, just because it's generating both negative and positive perceptions. On one hand, the card signifies that you have successfully managed to accomplish much of your goals and you've managed to attain a significant material of wealth in the process. However, on the other hand, there's a significant chance that you start valuing things only for the material wealth or worth. You've worked hard to get to the point where you are now, and it's absolutely natural for you to desire to make sure that you remain stable. But this also is a chance to turn into an early possessive or greedy person who wants to ensure that no one's capable <coughs> of taking away your own wealth. Um, it shows that you're currently in a position in which you have solid investments, uh, because you're newfound wealth, um, you're protective of what you've managed to accumulate throughout time and you desire to steadily increase your overall net worth. Be aware that without risk, there is no reward. If you spend too much of your time attempting to conserve, you may become a prisoner to your own material possessions. Wealth is a kind of energy as well and we create what we express. Okay.
Obviously, I'm going to find and look for the most generous meaning of this. No. Um, am I holding on to past aspects of love life? <sighs> Maybe like a little? Cause this is weirder because if we bring in polyamory and the idea that I believe I can love and connect with multiple people. Because if I think I believed in being more monogamous, it'd be much easier to be like, I want something different and trust that I can find a, a singular partner, shake off old attachment. Because I believe that like I can connect m multi with multiple people I think part of me latches on to obviously like friendship with those people. Like I don't, I have like no really negative connections, um, mostly just neutral. And um, so I guess, but this is ideal outcome. So like ideal outcome is that I let go and move forward. I mean, that is an ideal outcome. Like get answers so that I can move forward. Um, if I make my own interpretations, Um, there's four coins and then a city in the background is on the card so the ideal outcome is that help through my connections and through my four loves maybe I end up with four partners we help a city grow and we help the planet in this huge way because we are so big and the energy we create are these big golden discs and I'm not sure why I'm stepping on two of you but maybe that's like what we're into I don't know um, we're gonna move on now okay I mean I don't like I feel like jealousy is something that with practice and it's just like is like a built reactionary behavior that with practice and confidence in bonds with people you can work through. So yeah, I don't know what the the heavens want me to focus on, but I'm going to focus on Maybe doing a little both, making, moving forward, but also at the same time, getting answers and manifesting, uh, being so epic that we're like city building with multiple loves that I cherish, like gold coins. Okay, so the next card we have, how to get there, and we pull justice, which... Just off the bat, I was like, you you show up authentically, you show up with kindness and compassion and love, and you do it the right way, and you bring positivity in the right way, and that's how you get there, and that jams with who I am and my pursuits, and so I think that was self-explanatory. Um, we'll look at what the... Uh, Justice Tarot. Okay, Justice, Fairness, Truth, Cause and Effects, Law. Um, there's the imagery, and then you're being called to account for your actions and will be judged accordingly. If acting in lightness with your higher self and for the greater good of others, you have nothing to worry about. 
Um, if you haven't, you'll be called out and made to own up to your actions. If this has you shaking your boots, know that the justice card isn't as black and white as you may think. The level of compassion and understanding accompany justice. And although you may have done something you regret, this card suggests that you will be treated fairly and without bias. Be ready to take responsibility for your actions and stand accountable for your ensuing consequences. Um, it's a positive sign. If you seek justice, um, it has its core justice about the search for truth. As you explore your truth, you will discover that things are not as clear cut as you had thought. Uh, be prepared to dip into the murky waters and explore what truth means to you. Be consciously aware of what you believe to be true and what you believe to be fair and ethical. Um, it might not be as clear cut as you think, so prepare to challenge yourself and explore new territories of your belief system. Cool. Now. 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 Okay. Now. I didn't know this next part was going to happen. Um, I've seen spreads before, and while we we're going through this, uh, the deck was next to them, but we saw the back side of the card. Um, the Queen of Swords um, was actually pulled from the bottom of the deck of where I had um, split it, um, and it was the top one. It was the bottom one too when we split it. Um, so it was the card above the first one we pulled. And how this was explained to me is you pull the bottom card from the deck to answer the question of what are we not seeing and what are we missing? Um, and the card we picked was the Queen of Swords. So, um... How this is explained to me is like lady boss, like um, independent, unbiased judgment, clear boundaries, direct communication. So what were we missing and everything? Um, that need to be true and confident from ourself. Um, engage in direct communication and having focus and intention to what you want. So those are my takeaways. Let's see what it says here. Um, combines the mental clarity and intellectual power of the suit of swords with the maturity and receptiveness of the queen. You have the gift of being able to use your intellect and unbiased judgment while also remaining flexible and open to receive input from other sources. Um, as you lead from the head and not the heart, you're better able to discern situations without the influence of emotion or sentimentality. You may believe that empathy or compassion towards others will distract you from the task at hand. Instead, you prefer to know the how, what, why, when, where, and who of everything to help you make sense of your environment and better understand others. It is not that you do not care about others, but you connect with other people through an intellectual understanding rather than emotional. Um, the Queen of Swords notes that you are a truth seeker. You're open to hearing the thoughts and opinions of others, but ultimately, you filter that information to decipher what is true and what is not. When interacting with others, you will not tolerate mistruth or expensive fluff. You prefer to get to the heart of the matter without engaging in too much chit chat or gossip. Uh, the Queen of Swords suggests that you have an innate ability to tell it how it is. That I feel like there's so much flavor text. Um, uh, if you are a single. Um, this card in your reading might signify that you'll meet someone that embodies the Queen of Swords. Um, yeah, the biggest, I think, takeaway for this is what are we missing in the romance equation for me personally? Um, 
seeing some of the other cards, seeing that I haven't been very direct or like intentional, um, but also that there was a part of me that was hiding, I guess. And obviously I'm presenting this more openly now, um, but maybe worn a wig a few times out in public um, and like worn like feminine clothes like twice and mostly in my own environment. Um, and I think this like badass bitch, I should use a different word than bitch, this badass babe, this queen who is intentional and focused and can directly communicate and embody learning um, with wisdom and intelligence that I can trust my brain as well as my heart and that I can sift through that for my goals and intentions and I can do that openly. Um, and I think missing that part, pulling that card and having that reflection led to me that weekend going out a little bit differently to events, um, wearing my pink wig, playing around with how I presented a little bit, um, but also tapping into what that energy feels like of being a, a badass babe boss, um, uh, who's more able or at the very least differently able to call in and navigate a space. Um, and I think it's important to be true to that as well. Um, and, and see where that goes. And so I've been since this Earth Day weekend um, brought a lot of the lessons from this into my life and I think it's bringing me closer to what I want um, which is finding romance partners and having more intimate connections um, in abundance in my life so that is that. Anything else I want to add? I mean, I don't know. I don't pull cards often, but I don't know. Like, there's multiple major arcana car like cards there that fit and conclusions of different kind, like kinds can be applied. And um, yeah, so thank you for watching. This is more of like a personal thing, but I felt like it was something I wanted to express and um, go through as an exercise again to remember some of the lessons I pulled and the differences I want to make. Um, so that I can build a better foundation and have that in my life. Um, I'm still working through the tower part, but I feel so close to that, like that abundance and that turning. And so we'll witness it together as I like live more openly. Um, so cool. I hope, uh, yeah, if you have any like questions or thoughts, um, throw them in the comments.